ओके सो वन अगेन गुड मॉर्निंग चिल्ड्रन द प्रीवियस पीरियड वॉट वी हैव कम ए क्रॉस इज वी हैव मेट अ क्रॉफ्ट हाउ अ गुड होस्ट ही वर्स वी हैव कम ए क्रॉस दैट टू इज एंड एट सो वी हैव कम ए क्रॉस सच डिटेल्स रिगार्डिंग द क्रॉफ्ट हिज हॉस्पिटैलिटी इवन वी हैव डिस्कस द सिक्स क्वेश्चन आंसर इट अपियर इन पेज नंबर थर्टी फोर i hope those things are clear for you these six questions we have uh, discussed i hope you remember the six questions that we have discussed towards the end of the previous hour so what we have come across is the crofter was so generous uh, towards the rat trap peddler that he shared whatever be the secrets of his life is regarding his earnings uh, not secrets actually the personal affairs of him we would which we don't usually disclose to strangers even those things were clear, i mean shared with the peddler and you have seen that the crofter and uh, the rat rap peddler they just uh, moved away from the home at the same time but later on after half an hour you can see that uh, our rat rap peddler uh, came again uh, in front of the crofter's home and just uh, smashed the window pane and stuck in his hand and then got hold of the pouch with a a uh, 30 krona took the 30 krona kept the pouch back and left the place it is where we have stopped in the previous class so can we continue with the remaining paragraphs so remember the philosophy of this man the philosophy was this the whole world with its attractions it's actually creating a it's a trap for the human beings we human beings to get attracted to it and to get fall into the trap don't you feel that he even had fallen into a trap what is the bait that attracted him over here in the previous incident the crofter who showed him the 30 kronas remember the crofter took it and uh, pointed out the uh, amount like this isn't it so it was i mean whether it was a bait for this man to fall into another trap or not let's see what happens so uh, in this are what we are going to learn is this ratra ped laughter that uh, taking the 30 krona what is the plan that he makes he didn't want to uh, move through the road why because uh, police may be there right behind him so he thought he'll just choose the word way there in the forest so he's moving through the forest and see forest winter time it will be really dark isn't it don't you feel so so let us see on how this man is going to fall into yet another trap that's what we are going to learn in this paragraph as he walked along with the money in his pocket he felt quite pleased with his smartness so he appreciated himself see how smart i am huh? why because i managed to get 310 krona amount 310 uh, krona uh, that too uh, by cheating the crofters and so he was so proud that he managed to get that 30 kronas all on a sudden he realized of course that at first he dared not continue on the public highway but must turn off the road into the woods and see after all he is a thief so he very he is very well aware of the fact that he is not supposed to use the public highway why because when the crofter come uh, if the crofter comes back to his home he'll naturally know why because the window pane is smashed open isn't it so naturally he'll file a complaint uh, in the station and naturally the police will be right behind him so he thought he won't choose the public highway instead he'll uh, turn off the road into the woods he'll choose one of the ways there in the woods or his forest during the first hours this caused him new, no dif- no difficulty so it was not at all a difficult task for this man in the beginning as he started choosing the way in the woods in the beginning it was really fine for him no problem at all in moving through the woods later in the day it became worse for it was a big and confusing forest which he had gotten into remember again gotten the past participle form of the word get is got just leave it for the time being it was an old usage okay right now gotten is not used at all so what happened is that as time moved on the ratra peddler understood that the forest that he got in was really a big and confusing forest so it was very difficult for him to find the way he tried to be sure to walk in a definite direction but the path twisted back and forth so strangely so he thought he should choose a perfect i mean a particular direction itself huh? he'll just straight away move on in that direction itself so that he'll reach the other end of the forest that is what he thought 
but what happens is that the path it really twists back and forth so it was really really difficult for him to understand whether he is going in the uh, right direction or not hmm? he walked and walked without coming to the end of the wood and finally he realized that he had only been walking around in the same part of the forest see have a look at the trap in which he had fallen right now now only he understood that he has been walking through the same path uh, all these time now the idea huh? so he realized that he had only been walking around the same part of the forest so right now he happens to be in a track so his own philosophical idea is right now applied in his life all at once he recall his thoughts about the world and the rat trap so all on a sudden the idea once again came back into him uh, see his own idea regarding the world and how he actually uh, saw a similarity of the world with that of the rat trap the same thing he once again recollected now his own turn had come so now the turn has come for himself uh he what he thought uh, earlier you know the cherish past time of this man he was uh, making fun of those people who had already fallen into the trap and even he was so happy to think about those people who were who were circling the trap isn't it but right now what happened his own turn came uh, he just fell into that trap as such he had let himself be fooled by a bait and had been caught Uh, right now what happened he was fooled uh, why because uh, he got attracted to a bait remember what is a bait a bait is a thing that attracts the prey isn't it here the bait what is a bait it is a 30 kroner hmm? so this amount actually happened to be a bait for this man and he went behind that bait and fall into the trap the whole forest with its trunks and branches its thickets thickets is actually the bushy area huh? and fallen logs closed in upon him like an impenetrable prison impenetrable prison means a very strong and tightly packed prison from which you cannot move out hmm? from which he could not uh, could never escape so that is what happened to him right now he has fallen into a trap that was created by the world hmm? and the uh, thing or else the thing of attraction or else the bait that uh, made him fall into the trap is nothing other than the 30 kroners that was shown by the crofter okay so now he had fallen into his own i mean into a trap that was there in the world and he is telling that the whole forest it seems with its trunks and branches thickets and fallen logs everything uh, has clo closed upon him like an impenetrable prison from which he can never escape hmm? now he got into a trap let us see on what happens after that it was late in december december you know a very cold month it is especially huh? sweden it is isn't it we have seen that the things happen over there in the swedish mine isn't it so it is really cold darkness was already descending over the forest huh? so darkness started approaching the forest this increased the danger and increased also his gloom and despair so what happened because of this it's already cold then darkness started appearing he is right now in the forest uh, what happened was that it, it increases gloom gloom sad and despair means hope he lost his hope huh? he lost his hope and he even turned much more sad finally he saw no way out and he sank down on the ground tired to death thinking that his last moment had come so he has been wandering for so long remember from morning isn't it from morning he started roaming around there in the forest and now he is altogether tired huh and so he sank on to the ground and he was so tired that he understood that his death is about to approach he was so tired he sank into the ground and he understood that it is going to be the last moments of this man but just as he laid his head on the ground he heard a sound a hard regular thumping thumping sound means a beating sound hmm? so he heard a beating sound there was no doubt as to what was he raised himself those are the hammer strokes from an iron mill hmm? so he understood see it is sure that something is nearby and the sound that he came across is uh, the sound that happens when uh, the uh, when from the iron mill huh, when the hammers hammer strokes hammer strokes uh, are being heard it is sure that there 
those are the hammer strokes that comes from the iron mill that is somewhere near that is sure he understood that someone on or something is nearby so he was so happy why because he was about to die he understood that his death is almost there and at that time when you listen to such sound naturally you know the excitement that comes in the mind of a person there must be people nearby huh? so he made it sure there are any way people who are there nearby he summoned all his strength summoned means gathered he gathered all his strength got up and staggered staggered earlier also we have learned two different words one is plodding and the other one is trudging same manner staggered walking unsteadily okay so in this in this chapter itself you are coming across a lot of words isn't it that to connected with walk remember last year uh, in your hornbill textbook you have learned the first poem you have learned the different words that you can use for walking uh, i hope you remember photograph a photograph that poem it was so there we have come across different number of words so same manner in this lesson also you are coming across words this is the third word that you are coming up with hmm? so he got up and staggered in the direction of the sound so somehow or the other he moved unsteadily towards the direction from which the sound was coming i hope the idea is clear for you the next paragraph the next paragraph starts with the name of the iron mill which we have listened to in the first hour the ranjo iron works i hope you remember it was in this place that the uh, crafter worked isn't it how uh, while he was uh, he started his career he worked over there and when he turned old old only he depended on his cow isn't it so the ranjo iron works which are now closed down when not so long ago a large plant with smelter rolling a smelter rolling mill and forge in the summer time long lines of heavily loaded barges and scows slid down the canal which led to a large inland lake and in the winter time the roads near the mill were black from all the coal dust which sifted down from the big charcoal crate so in this paragraph we are coming across coming across the things that we usually find in an iron mill Hmm? like a smelter then the rolling mill then forge then barges scows do you wish to have a look at these things maybe i'll uh, let you watch all those things before that okay let me start with this ranjo iron bug so the rat trap peddler he understood the ranjo iron work it is in vernia and this ranjo iron work it has been closed right now earlier uh, right now also it is working but not like how it was working earlier earlier it was a large plant with a smelter a rolling mill and forge and what is the smelter i'll just let you watch what it is this is what a smelter is i hope the idea is clear it's an establishment where actually this uh, uh, i mean uh, an establishment where the base metal is being extracted from its ore okay so this is what a smelter is i hope the idea is clear for you what a smelter is okay now then the next thing that we have learned i mean come across in this uh paragraph is barges see these this is a barge barge is actually a flat bottomed big or else a long ship where metals are being carried okay so this is what a barge is i hope the idea is clear what a barge is the first one that i have shown was smelter and this one is a barge okay now what a scow is i'll show that also this is a scow scow also anyway a flat boat itself but not as big as like that of a barge okay so smelter we have come across smelter we have come across barge barge and we have come across the scow okay so these things actually uh, comes over there the, it is with the help of this barges and the scows that uh, iron is being brought into the mill okay let's move back to our chapter okay so the rams to iron mark it is closed now long ago it was a smelter smelter as i told earlier it's an establishment where the metal is being extracted from its ore 
Hmm? Then rolling mill, the mill, the same, the rolling mill is same like that of this melter itself. That is a mill in which these iron extracts are being taken. Hmm? Then forge, the exact word meaning of forge is actually furnace for melting the iron. It's a furnace, okay. Forge is a metal, I mean it's a furnace where uh, the metal is being melted. Hmm? Okay. So earlier the Aranjo iron work was like this, a large plant having smelter, rolling mill and forge. And in the summer time what happened is that long lines of heavily loaded barges and scows. Barges and scows right now we have seen what it is. It slid down the canal which led to a large inland lake. So what happened is that with the help of this barges and scows only the metals are being brought to the uh, Aranjo iron works. And in winter time, the roads near the mill were black from all the coal dust which sifted down from the big charcoal crates. So what happened is that during the summer time, these irons, uh, iron is being brought over here. The big iron is being brought over here. And then during the winter time, what happens is that the blacksmith uh, and or else other workers there in the factory, they work on this metal. And they do all sorts of work. And you know at that time the charcoal is being used. So the, the dust, the charcoal dust, uh, it is black. Uh, I mean the, uh, the area will be completely covered with snow. So what happened is that the air is polluted over there. And the black dust, it appears or else it falls on top of this snowflakes. So that is the reason why the roads near the mill were black from the coal dust. Which sifted down the big charcoal grains. Okay, I hope the idea is clear. Moving on to the next paragraph. During one of the long dark evenings, just before Christmas, the master smith and his helper sat in the dark forge uh, near the furnace waiting for the pig iron which had been put in the fire to be ready to put on uh, the anvil. So what happened is that in the dark evenings, the blacksmith along with his helper, they'll be walking over there, they'll be sitting there and they'll be working over there with the pig iron. Hmm? So the dark long, uh, the long dark evenings just before Christmas, it's Christmas time, the, the master smith or else the blacksmith and his helper or else the assistants, they sat together in the dark forge, especially near the furnace and they'll be waiting for the pig iron which had been put in the fire. See in the smelter you have seen uh, the pig iron, I'll show you what a pig iron is, which had put in the fire. So when it is put into the fire, what happens is that, is that it melts hmm? and then to be ready to put on the anvil. What an anvil is also, I'll show you. Just wait. This is the pig iron, okay? The pig iron. So this pig iron will be, through, uh, will be exposed into the furnace and then naturally it will melt. And at that time only that golden glow you have come across, isn't it? Huh? The thing appears and then it will be kept in the anvil. This is anvil. It's a, it is on top of this that the uh, blacksmith huh, will hold on the melted piece and he'll beat it and he'll make it in a what? In he'll just uh, reframe it into different shapes. It is in that manner things are being brought out. I hope you might have seen uh, how the works done by the blacksmith, how it is being, how the pig iron is being beaten, how it is melted, and how it is being beaten into different different shapes. So this is anvil. Okay. I okay, will move on. Every now and then, one of them got up to stir the glowing mass with a long iron bar. Returning in a few moments, dripping with perspiration, though as he was as was the custom, he wore nothing but a long shirt and a pair of wooden shoes. So what happened is that, see, two people are working there near the furnace, isn't it? The blacksmith as well as his assistant. Hmm? Assistant. So what happened is that in between, one of them will go over there and will stir the glowing mass with the help of a long iron bar and once he comes back we can see that he'll be completely drenched with sweat why because that much uh, hot temperature they are exposed to hmm? and see the way in which they are dressed there where they'll wear a long shirt and even a pair of wooden uh, shoes so that they can prevent them the wooden shoes is to prevent themselves from the hot temperature there because they are standing very next to the furnace at the time, there were many sounds to be heard in the forge. So now you are going to the, listen to the different noises that are being heard 
inside uh, the uh, Ramsjo iron milk and even the uh, I mean even outside the Ramsjo iron works. Okay, the big bellows groaned and the burning coal cracked. So how even bellow? I'll uh, show you in the next class. Okay, what a bellow is. Uh, even an equipment uh, that is used in the iron works. So the sound produced from that. And then the burning coal, how when the coal cracks, that sound also is being heard. The fire boy shoveled charcoal. Shovel means, you know, throw charcoal into the maw of the furnace, into the opening of the furnace with a great deal of clatter. So at that time, the clattering sound being heard when the boy throws charcoal pieces into it. And outside roared the waterfall and a sharp north wind whipped the rain against the brick tiled roof webbed again the word meaning is beat okay hmm. so what are the different noises that you come across in the iron mill iron work the ramsho iron work inside and outside the ramsho iron work the first thing is that the big bellow groan and the burning charcoal crack and when this fire boy when he throws the charcoal into the mow of the furnace uh, i mean again a clattering sound is being heard and what about the things that happen outside the waterfall you can listen to the sound of the waterfall and even a sharp north wind that actually uh, whip the rain against the brick tile roof these are the noises or else the sound that one can come across in the ram's jaw iron work this question can be asked just, just note it down on the side what are the different uh, sounds to be heard in the forge uh, this can be the question the sentence can be the question and you can answer these points if it is asked. I hope the question and the answer is clear for you. Okay. Now we'll move on to the next paragraph. And this paragraph itself, the paragraph that we have just completed, those points can be used uh, in another question too. The question goes like this. Why, did, why didn't the blacksmith notice the arrival of uh, the rat trap peddler? That question can also be asked. So please note down that question. I repeat. Why didn't the blacksmith notice the arrival of the rat trap seller? I hope the question is clear. Why didn't the blacksmith notice the arrival of the rat trap seller? The points are these. Because of these sounds, it was probably on account of all this noise that the blacksmith did not notice that a man had opened the gate and entered the forge until he stood close up to the furnace. Now the idea? I hope the question and the answer is clear for you. Uh, because of all the noise, all the noise that is mentioned in the previous paragraph, because of all these sounds, the blacksmith couldn't notice or else identify the presence of a man there in the forge until he came so close to the furnace. It means that this man had come across this man, but only towards the end. Okay? I hope the point is clear. Surely it was nothing unusual for poor vagabonds without any better shelter for the night to be attracted to the forge by the glow of the light which escaped through the zooty, zooty panes. Zooty panes here means the window panes over there. In between, uh, through the uh, gaps, what happens is that the light penetrates and anyone from outside, they can just get attracted to this light and can reach the uh, forge. Got the idea? Huh? So it is nothing unusual for the blacksmith. Why? Because vagabonds like him used to come and uh, seek shelter during one of the nights there. So it was never a surprising thing for the blacksmith to come across this rat trap cellar. Okay? The blacksmith glanced only casually and indifferently at the intruder. So what about the blacksmith? Was he concerned about the parent, I mean the, about the man who had came in, who had come in? No, never. Uh, because it was a usual thing that he comes across. Uh, so he just glanced really casually and indifferently at the intruder. The intruder is none other than the rat trap peddler. He looked the way people of his type usually did. With a long beard, dirty, ragged and with a bunch of rat traps dangling on his chest. So here we come across the appearance of the uh, rat trap seller as told or else as per the view of the blacksmith, isn't it? Uh, what he comes across is being mentioned over here. Hmm? This blacksmith, not blacksmith, sorry, the rat trap peddler, how does he appear? He appear like the usual person of his type, 
uh, a wand a wand wanderer a, a usual wanderer or else a usual tramp with a long beard then dirty uh, appearance then rag clothes then with a bunch of rat traps dangling dangling means hanging on his chest so like any other tramp the same appearance is there for this man too he asked permission to stay and the master blacksmith nodded a haughty consent haughty means a very rude proud consent okay without honoring him with a single word so what about the bla blacksmith was he like the crofter no remember the crofter was really a very kind man uh, he was too hostile isn't it? i mean uh, the hospital sorry he, the hospitality that he provided was really awesome isn't it but what about this man the bla master blacksmith he didn't give any importance to this man and almost gave a rude uh, not a uh, rude a proud consent uh, ah okay you may stay in like that an uh, indifferent comment came from the blacksmith the tram did not say anything either huh? so the blacksmith also didn't speak to the tram and even the tram was also not ready to speak back to the uh, blacksmith why because anyway they didn't come over there to have a conversation he had not come there to talk but only to warm himself and sleep huh? it was really cold so it will be very difficult for him to stand out or else to be there in the forest so his primary purpose is to seek warmth that is readily available why because it is a furnace that is nearby so once he stands nearby itself naturally uh, uh, he can turn warm isn't it so until now the characters that we have come across is the rat trap seller and the crofter isn't it we these are the two different characters that we have come across and now we are moving on to another phase of the chapter where a third person is actually coming up hmm? there uh, maybe i can uh, tell you like this see how a third person uh, has changed i mean not changed actually a deviation in the life of uh, a narrator not narrator the main character the peddler Hmm? so what happened is that in the next paragraph that we are that you are going to come across you are going to come across a man the owner of the ramsjo iron mill the present owner of the ramsjo iron mill so this owner is actually a, an ex mill free person okay so what happened is that he is i mean you know the character trait of this mill free people they are always hard working people they do some work or the other they are uh, really punctual enough isn't it huh? you uh, these are the common character traits that appear for a milton isn't it so what happened is that this man is so workaholic that he wants good quality stuffs to be exported from his uh, mill so for that he used, used to come up uh, to check whether the work is going on properly or not Hmm? so every time when he, he comes up for different uh, I men for his rounds he'll come up over there and you can see uh, that right now he is over there as part of his rounds just to inspect uh, go for an inspection whether the workers are doing their work properly or not so at that time this man will come across the uh, rat trap peddler hmm? but anyway this owner of this iron mill is entirely different from that of the uh, iron master that we are not iron master sorry the blacksmith that we have come across huh? so he decided to talk to the man and what happened is that when he comes across this rat trap peddler remember it's night and he is staying i mean he is lying down near the furnace there and he mistook this rat trap peddler to be an old friend of him so that is what we are going to see in the coming paragraphs we'll take a bit and stop okay in those days the ramsjo iron mill was owned by a very prominent iron master whose greatest ambition was to ship out good iron to the market he watched both night and day to see that the work was done as well as possible and at this very moment he came into the forge on one of his nightly rounds of inspection so as i told earlier uh, the man's greatest ambition was to ship out the goods good iron to the market huh? so he wanted good quality stuff to be sent in, uh, to uh, to reach the market and for that he made it sure that his workers worked 
with utter perfection for that he always used to come up for rounds and at this moment uh, this moment he has come up over there in such a schedule just to check on whether the workers are working properly or not he is right now there to check these okay naturally the first thing he saw was the tall ragamuffin who had eased his way so close to the furnace that steam rose from his wet rags the iron master did not follow the example of the blacksmith who had hardly deigned to look at the stranger he walked close up to him looked him over very carefully then tore off his slouch hat to get a better view of his face so the reaction of this iron master is differently as i told earlier it is completely different from that of the uh, blacksmith the blacksmith didn't even uh, ask some, ask anything isn't it uh, he just gave a hearty consent uh, for him to stay over there but what happened naturally the, when this man came up the first thing that he noticed was the tall ragamuffin ragamuffin refers to a vagabond who's having a dirty appearance altogether uh, who had eased his way so close to the furnace who has arranged himself uh, to lay knee very next to the furnace Uh, what happened what is going on there the steam rose from his wet rack so he was that much drenched isn't it he was so wet and now what you could see is steam is rising from his wet racks the iron master did not follow the example of the bla blacksmith who had hardly deigned to look at the stranger the blacksmith was not at all here ready even to have a look at this man isn't it uh, so uh, anyway the iron master was not like the blacksmith he wanted to have a look at this man hmm he walked close up to him he walked very near to him looked him over very carefully and then tore off his slouch hat slouch means uh, the hat that is drooping or is kept over his face to get a better view of his face so this man the iron master badly wanted to see who is lying over there to have a look at his face he arranged this hat to okay But of course it is you nails the law he said how you do look see have a look oh it's you nails the law uh, see what an appearance you have a very shocking reply came from the iron master as i told earlier iron master mistook this man the arat trap peddler to be his friend old friend nails the law okay so nails the law no down this name Uh, Nils Olof. Nils Olof is an old comrade of the Iron Master, and he mistook this rat trap peddler to be Nils Olof. Got the idea? Do Do you really feel uh, feel as if it's going to be another another trait? Uh, not trait. Sorry, another bait uh, in which this man, the rat trap peddler, will get attracted and will fall into. Let's see it the next day. okay in the next class we'll look into it so remember we have learned until this we have come across an iron master here three characters all together until now isn't it ha huh? fourth character we have just mentioned the name nelsolo other than that we haven't come across that man isn't it so the first character that we have come across is a rat trap peddler followed by crofter who gave him shelter and after that we have come across the iron master then before iron master even the blacksmith even isn't it the blacksmith not much role but still the blacksmith was also mentioned along with his apprentice or his assistant then we came across the another important character iron master the iron master uh, he was not like the blacksmith he conversed uh, i mean he really wanted to see who is lying down there near the furnace and for that he removed the hat of this man and he could notice that it was none other than his old comrade nils olof he mistook him to be nils olof okay and here maybe you'll have a confusion with the word deigned deigned the word meaning is kind okay kind he didn't have a kind gesture isn't it this man the blacksmith didn't have a kind gesture towards uh, peddler but the iron master was never like that okay so children uh, thank you so much for your patient listening i hope the idea is clear for you i think we'll meet uh, next week anyway whatever it is go through the portions that we have covered until this and remember to note down the answer of the five questions that will reach you through the parent app okay 
so thank you uh, thank you all and have a wonderful afternoon bye take care